Ozymandias is a streamlined 4x game whose main selling point is that you can get the satisfaction of building an empire and prevailing strategically over your enemies all in one sitting, as a game is usually less than 45 minutes long. Single player games start with selecting a map using the arrows on the side of the screen. You are then brought to the map where you'll play the game. From here, you'll select which empire you want to play. Different empires have different difficulty ratings. These are determined by a starting city size, traits of the empire, and starting location. In multiplayer games, these difficulties are displayed under the empires when you select them, also showing their starting city size and trait. From here, you'll request at least two civilizations that you want to play. After that, once everyone else has selected their civilizations, empires are then decided by the AI and the game starts. Your economy is split into four parts. Science is represented by the beaker and is used to research technology. Food is represented by the plant and is used to expand into new tiles, build cities, grow existing cities, and move units. Military power is represented by the sword and is used to increase the effectiveness of your armies. Oh my god, you can't just kill Kenny! Of course I can! I have over 50 million power because I took- Money is represented by the pound symbol and is used to purchase more science, food, or power at the listed exchange rate. If you make a mistake during your turn, you can reset your turn and start over by clicking the ticket in the bottom right of the screen. The hourglass is where you end your turn. Besides purchasing more materials for you, money can also be used to reduce the waste of leftover materials, with an appropriate category for each type of material. With 50 unused science and a default waste rate of 25%, 13 science would be wasted if it was not used. If I spend money to reduce this percentage to negative 20%, only 10 would be lost. Money can also be used to purchase military units, with each successive unit becoming more expensive. One of the uses of food is buying new hexes to expand your empire. Different tile types have different expense costs, and the cost increases the further you are from a city. A discount of 1 is also applied for each adjacent tile. A breakdown of the costs are displayed in the tooltip. Another use for food is building cities. Costs are determined by tile type and number of existing cities. A discount is also given to coastal territories, which includes inland lakes. Cities must be built at least one tile away from enemy territory and at least one tile away from existing cities. Another use for food is growing a city. Cost is again determined by tile type and by how large the city is, with larger cities having a larger cost to expand. Cities start with two population. Science can be used on the three middle columns of the technology tree to increase the yield of a specific tile type. For example, buying the 15 cost science tech for river tiles would change my science yield from 10 to 13, as I have three river tiles and each yield technology increases the appropriate yield by one. Be warned, a city uses the city yield at the bottom of the screen and not the tile type it is built on, so an early city can reduce your yields if your city yields are less than the tile you're replacing it on. You can also research flag technologies, which reduce the cost of accruing a new tile by one food. To purchase technology for a certain train type, you must have at least one of that train type, which explains why four of the train types are grayed out on my screen. Power is projected from cities and units. For cities, each population grants one power, so a city with a population of four has four power. That power is at full strength on the city tile itself and reduces by one for each tile away from the city that you travel. City power projects one tile out from your territory into neutral territory. Units exist as armies and fleets. Units can be spawned from any city. However, fleets require a coastal city to be spawned in. Inland lakes count as a coast. Movement of units costs food with ships being able to be moved down rivers. Units have a starting power of 1 and project their power onto all adjacent hexes. Projected power can be seen by clicking on the power tab and looking at the color wheel. One way to increase power is by buying power technology. Each power technology gives you one additional power per unit or city on a specific terrain type. There is no limit to the number of power technologies that can be bought. 
However, if a power technology is bought, the cost of all other power techs, regardless of train type, will increase as well. Note, power is granted to the tile being fought over, not the tile the unit is standing on, unless that is the contested tile. If two parties claim the same neutral tile with a flag, whoever has the most power is given the hex. Power can come from a power technology, for the train type, city power projection, or a unit nearby. If power is equal, whoever has the more adjacent tiles wins. If number of adjacent tiles is equal, nobody gets the hex. Power can be increased by spending money on power, which increases non-linearly, as the more you buy, the more expensive each successive power becomes. Cost also increases the more units you have. Buying two power will give each unit three power that is projected onto nearby hexes, with one base power and then two power being bought. Bought power is applied the following turn. To conquer an enemy's territory, you need a unit adjacent to their hexes. Clicking on the power tab shows a color wheel on contested hexes. If your power is greater than theirs, represented on the color wheel, you will threaten that territory. If it remains greater than the enemy for another turn, you will then capture that territory. It is important to note that you can add more units next to a contested hex to increase your own power. Hills also gives the defender a plus 2 boost to power, while islands and forests give a plus 1 bonus to the defender as well. If a unit is displaced by a territory loss, it is placed onto an adjacent, empty, friendly tile. If no such tile exists, it is destroyed. At the start of each turn, you're presented with two opportunities. These may be a reward, challenge, or payment. A reward gives you something for free, like claiming two food per grassland, while completing a challenge will then give you a reward, like getting flag text to receive materials. The last type, payment, gives you something. Often pay 50 of one resource to receive more of it over several turns, or pay something to gain power for a few turns. These opportunities change as the game evolves. You can have up to three at a time, accessed by clicking on the crown on the left hand side of the screen. In the endgame, victory point opportunities may be presented, offering a crown in exchange for certain materials. These crowns can be used to win the game. Your win progress can be seen by clicking on the crown on the left hand side of the screen. You need to collect a certain number of crowns to win the game, displayed at the top of the menu. This number is usually 7. These crowns can be gained from the aforementioned opportunity cards or by completing victory conditions. These conditions change value and crown rewards with every game and map, so be sure to think ahead. The number of crowns required to win the game and the conditions and the crowns they grant can all be changed from the menu. You can also change the game to a domination mode. And finally, the last thing to know is that every empire on every map has two positive and two negative traits. These are generally a percentage or flat value increase or decrease to flags, buying units, or researching waste or technology. You can also click on an empire's banner while you have your own victory screen open to see their progress towards victory. Some tips and tricks to keep in mind when you play the game is to keep a lookout for the power opportunity. This power gives you a discount to power cost if you reduce your power waste to negative 50. It's an extremely strong opportunity and it's well advised to keep your power waste at negative 55 until you get this quest to fully upgrade it. At the start of the game, trying to expand in predominantly one territory type is a good idea as it allows you to maximize yields from early research. And finally, military might is not the sole determinant of who wins. In this example, I see that hanging gardens requires 800 gold and gives 3 crowns, which will give me a victory. I adjust my spending, and glory is now eternal.